Hello everyone, my name is uh, Brian Robson for those who don't know me and uh, I'd like to share with you a, a few thoughts that struck me recently when I was reading Psalm 34. No time to read the whole psalm but I'm going to pick out a few verses which have a, a common theme. Verse 7 says uh, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Verse 9 says, O oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no lack. Verse 11 says, Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. And it struck me that the fear of the Lord is not a phrase that we use very often, um, not something which is, is pre preached about a lot. And maybe for, for some of us that seems like a, uh, an, an Old Testament concept, but uh, actually we believe passionately that the God of the Old Testament and the God of the New Testament are one and the same. Uh, and so that is something we should be thinking about as, as Christians. Do we have the fear of the Lord? Um, because Proverbs tells us in verse 7 of chapter 1, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And uh, chapter 9 verse 10 says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So if we don't have the fear of the Lord, we're short of knowledge and not very wise. And the fear of the Lord is, is something that should motivate us uh, to actually sort of we want to treat the Lord with a great deal of respect and with reverence and, and awe uh, and not to be over familiar with him, which is a, a temptation we often fall, fall into. Um, if, but if we love the Lord, we will also fear him and we will want to keep his, his commandments. I mean, we, we will want to avoid doing anything that might incur his displeasure. Uh, if we don't do that, um, we can expect to be disciplined sooner or later. Um, Hebrews 12 verse 6 and again in Revelation 3:19, it says that the Lord who the Lord loves he chastens in the authorized version or disciplines in most modern translations and that can be something rather unpleasant uh, speaking of somebody who's went through a period of, of chastening myself a few years ago um, I can say it was not very pleasant it was quite uh, a difficult time at the same time I was really glad about it because it, it really sorted something out for me. I had a, a, a sort of persistent, persistent problem uh, in, in my life. And the Lord's chastening, though painful, was, was very welcome. Uh, and so uh, we, can, we can rejoice in that. Hebrews 12 verse 11 says, no, no chastening for the present, as the authorised version says, seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterwards it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness. So I can really testify to that from, from, from personal experience. And the important thing for me was that it was actually a demonstration to me that God actually loved me enough to discipline me. Uh, because if he didn't care about me, he wouldn't bother. So that's, uh, again, it's something we can rejoice in, even though it's painful. We can actually rejoice in that. And there's a, t a tension, isn't there? Because we, we talk a lot about God is love. Uh, and uh, often hear people these days talking about God's unconditional love and I do wonder whether that is really uh, what the scripture teaches um, we have to get the, our theologians working on that one uh, but to me that, to me it always seems that there are, there are certain conditions attached to, to God's love um, John 3.16 says God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life so that the love there is, is linked with belief um, Elsewhere in, the, in John's Gospel, uh, I've been reading that recently, um, John chapter 15, verse 10, Jesus talks about the fact that he loves those who, who keep his commandments. Uh, so that, again, there's, a, there's an obedience is, is, is attached to uh, experiencing God's, God's love. And if we don't keep that tension between the fear of the Lord and experiencing God, God's love, there's a, you know, there's, a, there's a healthy tension there. And if we don't get that, you know, we, we can become over, over familiar uh, and uh, almost casual sometimes in, in our attitude to God. And we're going to, to miss out on a lot if, if we do that. Uh, I was, I know some of you have heard a song going, going around lately where it sing, talks about God's reckless love. Uh, and I, I, I struggle with that one because uh, to me, you know, reckless means uh, sort of 
not heeding danger and um, being quite, quite quite silly about about things. Uh, maybe the songwriter meant to say that God's love is uh, what's the word extravagant. I, I can I can live with that, but reckless I have problems with. But maybe some of you don't. I don't know. Um, but the, the the psalm goes on to talk about all the blessings that are there for those who do fear the Lord. Um, no time to go, go into the all, but uh, for example, um, verse 9, those who fear him have no lack. Verse 15, uh, verse Psalm 34 says that the eyes of the Lord are towards the righteous and his ears towards their cry. Or to put it another way, the Lord watches out for us and listens out for us. What is it in verse 17? When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their, their troubles. Verse 18, lovely promise there. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted. He saves the crushed in spirit. Verse 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous. See, we're not promised an easy time as Christians. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Verse 22, the last verse. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who seek refuge in him will be condemned. So there's some wonderful promises there. But we've got to get that that that, that, that right tension between uh, the love of the Lord and the, the fear of the Lord. But, but that, that fear of the Lord is a wonderful thing for, for constraining us and for motivating us to really want to keep God's commandments uh, and to, to to reap the blessing that comes from, from doing that. So let's end with a, with a, with a prayer. Amen. Loving Heavenly Father, we acknowledge that you are a holy and an awesome God. We know this in our heads. Grant that we may have an ever-growing appreciation of this in our hearts also. We thank you. You made it possible for us to know you and to be loved by you through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. Thank you that you watch out for us and you listen out for us. And that when we fear you, we lack no good thing. Give us grace and strength through your Holy Spirit to demonstrate our love for you by the, in the way we keep your commandments and in the way we live our lives in daily fellowship with you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.